Hey everybody, happy new year. Today, I wanna to talk about data when it comes to real-time rendering engines and the popularity of them throughout the years and the upcoming years. So I wanna to use today to kind of predict what I think will happen in 2025 in terms of the competition, who's gonna come out on top, who's gonna to see a subtle decline. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, I'm gonna show you right now. So I'm using Google Trends, free website, just Google, Google Trends, right? And the idea is, this is a free way to actually check the popularity of any keyword. So here we've got Justin Trudeau, right? If I hit explore, watch what happens. I can choose to review interest over time by a location. So let's say it's worldwide and time. So let's say, you know, the past 12 months. And so you'll see, you'll start to see these little bumps and dips um, over time. So past seven days, you know, he just resigned. So obviously there's a spike. So what I wanna show you are some ups and downs that I've noticed when analyzing some data around real-time rendering engines. So let me get started. So I'm gonna start dropping in all the popular real-time render engines. So let's drop in Lumion. Okay, got a search term here. All right, and looks looks normal, right? And what we're seeing here is it's on a scale of zero to 100. And how this works is the data is all relative. And this is a great way for them to explain it, but don't think of it as like 50 means, oh, 500,000 searches, at any moment, no, it's, it's relative. So 100 just means a lot and zero means like no data or nothing at all, right? And it doesn't really mean anything until you plot it against another keyword. So we've got Lumion, let's try Twin Motion. So now we've got two lines plotted, okay? And this is searches within the, the past seven days, right? So right off the bat, you can actually see people are searching for Lumion a lot more than Twin Motion. So Let's make things a little bit more interesting. Let's drop Enscape in this. So now we can actually see that there's a little bit of a battle between Lumion and Enscape, right? And so seven days, it's not really a long enough slice. And so what I like to do is actually look at it over a long time span. So let me do past five years. And this, in my opinion, is where I think trends really start to appear. So let's let's kick it off super simple. Red is twin motion, right? You can see initially at the start of our data here, right? There was a nice uptick and then it kind of died down and then it slowly and gradually picked up. We're seeing kind of like the inverse with Lumion where it's actually, I don't want to say like dying, but it's actually decreasing. And here I'm just, I'm looking at it on a web level. I can even look at it at a YouTube search level, which in my opinion is probably better because this is the content people are searching for when it comes to education, learning, and news. So if I do that, the data is gonna look a little similar, but look at that. This, in my opinion, is so much more telling. We're seeing that there's there's a drastic fall off in Lumion content. So let me add some more players. Uh, D5 render in, and we're seeing a nice steady growth here, right? Compared to twin motion, they're almost intertwining here. So this is where things start to get really interesting because now there's almost like a converging point here, right? It's almost like the big players are coming down and the smaller, you know, I know twin motion is owned by Epic and very large company, but you can almost see, we'll say the underdogs are rising up. Let's drop in cast vantage. Okay, relatively low traffic. Let's throw in Chaos Envision, their sister product. This is another real-time rendering engine. And this is brand new. So that's why you can see it's got absolutely zero. And then a couple ticks at the um, at the announcement date. I was looking at this data today, trying to make sense of it all. And the reason I do this is just so I'm on top of trends and I understand, you know, are people moving towards a piece of software or are they leaving? And I don't know how else you see that other than pure data, right? So let's drop someone else in. Who use Unreal Engine? And this is gonna completely like destroy this chart and I'll show you why. This is all Unreal Engine, it's purple. Notice the drastic difference between all the other engines, right? So let me shrink the data point because this spike, this massive spike are usually tied to like large announcements. It could be like the Unreal Engine 5 release. I don't remember, big updates. Anyways, big news, that's what that's about. If I bring this down to, let's say, past 12 months, right? You can see there's just one giant thick line, right? But Unreal Engine is basically like seven times more popular than all the other real-time rendering engines. And, you know, what's the reason behind that? I mean, think of all the different industries that are using Unreal. You've got like, you've got games, automotive, film. There's always crazy new updates, crazy tech, you know. But that's good. We love Unreal Engine. You know, it's like if they win, I feel like the industry wins. 
so it's phenomenal so i'm going to remove it just because it's you know messing up our data in a way because this is all relative right now if i remove that lumion's initial spike is what is king here but if i were to just draw some lines here let me let me go back to five years and we could plot plot some trajectories and i'll zoom in a bit here watch this i'm gonna grab my little snipping tool and i'm gonna go over to mural and drop that in so if any of you do uh, some day trading, <laughs> you're gonna know what I'm doing here. But um, basically, if I were to just tackle the peaks, right? Let's just say I'm working on uh, on yellow, and yellow is Enscape, right? We can see here that actually Enscape has got a pretty healthy trajectory here. And we'll make that a little darker, right? You see that? But it's not great to always go by the peaks because you'll see if we follow this line here, it's starting to dip, right? There's a lot of dipping going on around around this area. And my opinion on each of these these companies, let me let me grab let me grab a couple couple more of these. All right, so we've got we've got another year. This is Lumion starting from the top. I think one of the issues Lumion's seen in the past several years is super expensive, and the integration of the ray trace engine horrible. I mean, I don't know if you've used Lumion, but Basically, they integrated is half baked. You could not, you couldn't render foliage or vegetation in glass for the longest time. They're slowly fixing it, but it's just too slow. It's too expensive, and I feel like that's really annoyed a lot of people. I've even noticed the same thing with my content. Um, you know, I've been putting out courses for Lumion for years now, and seeing the difference between like the 202018 content versus 2024 performance content, like day or night. So I could see that there. Enscape, you know, has been super, super healthy over the years. You know, we're we're in a good spot here, and then we're seeing it, you know, kind of drop down a bit here. And one of my one of my suspicions here is I feel like the industry might be getting a little at me Enscape fatigue, if you will. It doesn't help that you have all these phenomenal like competitors coming out. And I know, you know, you shouldn't really compare Enscape to like Twin Motion and you know, Lumion and Defy Render, because, you know, Enscape's really a concept tool, but people do. I, that's that's the reality. You go into any conference room and talk about real-time rendering engines, it's going to come up. That's the reality of it. It's a phenomenal tool. It's, you know, quick, quick results, easy to learn, but I feel like people are starting to lean towards other tools, and I think that's why we're seeing a push from Chaos on the Vantage and the Envision side, but, you know, just going to the traffic here, it just... It's just not not comparable. I mean, it's nothing compared to what they have with Enscape, right? Like, look at these numbers. I mean, we're talking about 19 Enscape, one Vantage, right? So it's going to take a lot of time for that to mature for Chaos to have, like, a really high-performing, realistic rendering engine, right? And then just, you know, talking about the trends, right? I was using Lumion, right? Lumion was at 75 here, and now we're at, a, you know, around 26. And this is, like, in a year, right? This is crazy. I mean, that's... That's like a threefold drop, right? And then to look at somebody else, you know, D, uh, D5, you know, five years ago was at a two. Now D5 is like hanging around around like a 14, 13, you know? That's pretty good growth. Um, you know, let's look at Twin Motion. Twin Motion's 20 here. And over here starting at 11, 12, 25, right? And then hanging out, you know, you can see here, they're, they're like mid band, right? So, where do I see all this? Why, why am I talking about all this? Again, we're, we're talking about trends. Where, where are these guys going? So here's my thoughts. I think Lumion, you know, let's say right now we're closing out at 29. I think end of this year, we're at 20. I think, I think there's going to be a continuation of this drastic drop, right? I think the competitors are getting way too good for them to not change drastically. The development cycle is just it's just not there. It's gotten better, but it's it's too slow compared to everyone else. Twin motion, you know, you can kind of see it's just like chugging along, you know, 12, 11, 10, 11, 18. You know, it's like bouncing around. And it for some reason it looks like it's having a hard time breaking this line right here, this um, this horizontal line at the 25 for this graph at least, right? So I don't know why it hasn't broken out. Um, cause there's been a lot of phenomenal updates. Yeah. It's free. You've got your path tracer. You've got Lumen. You've got, you know, Unreal Engine as the backbone of this, but it's just not, 
It's not poking out. You see that? You've got a 24 here. 15, 14. But it's not going anywhere. It's not... It's not going beyond that 14. So, my opinion, I think it stays stays about the same. I'm going to put it between 15 and 20. That's kind of where I see that bracket, right? So, about, about the same, right? So, now let's move over to Enscape, right? So, Enscape, five years ago, we were at an 8. Chugging, chugging, chugging. 11. 16. 15. 20. 22. 23. You know, it's, it's bopping. You're seeing that increase. Again, we're at 23 here. We're at eight, right? So that's almost four times, right? It's going up, going up, going up. A little bit of a dip. Looked like everyone else was affected by that. Yeah, you know, coming up to 30, right? Hits her, it hit 30. Now it's ping-ponging between 30 and 24. It's in this little ping-pong. And then it kind of starts to drop down. Not by much, but it's dropping down. But again, holding it above 20 and, you know, with the holidays and everything, that's, that's what this little divot is. I think they stay around 20. I don't think, I don't think they go down to 15. I think that's going to be dependent on the performance of Vantage and Envision. Because again, these are their real-time rendering big brothers to Enscape. They can bridge between them. And I think like if you're Enscape fatigued and you want better results, you're going to use the bridge and you're probably going to use that tool, right? I think the other thing that might drive Enscape down a bit here is the price. Um, I don't know if you've looked at the price recently, but last time I checked, it was like 60 to $80 a month. That, in my opinion, hard to swallow with Twin Motion being free. D5 Pro is $30. Doesn't really make too much sense to me there because um, it's not like a full robust tool. I think it's one of those things. It's like it's a great enterprise tool. And I think you're paying like that enterprise rate. And just for the sake of my sanity, let me just check this because I don't want someone to be like, oh, Andy, it's it's not actually that much. Okay. All right. Yeah, fix, fixed seat's 46, but floating seat's 80. You know, and that's a yearly, right? Yeah, there we go. So I'm not crazy. All right, so we'll go back. We'll go back here, right? The D5, we're talking about beginning of the year. We're at like a four, seven, a two, a one. You know, really, really low, low numbers. And then you don't really see it start taking off until 2022, right? Compared to everyone else, we're now at a five, a 10, a seven, 10, 13, 12, 15. So you're seeing that growth and that's really this 22 mark right here, right here. You really see a big, big difference. So we're talking about three, three to 12. That's four times. That's a lot of growth in, in one year, right? I think that's pretty healthy. I, I have my money on D5 hitting this, this 20 mark. I think definitely breaking it. I mean, just like this, this chart right here, or this, this path, like if we were to go here, and do our little, uh, do our little, uh, little craft here, right? I just feel like if we bring this off the page, we're looking something like that. I mean, that's the 25 mark. I'm just saying, I think, I think it's really possible just to make that easier to see. You hold on shift. That's 25. Like, I don't think that's that far away. Let me make this gray so it's not confusing and make this red. So look at that. And this, that's kind of what I was saying with the, uh, with Lumion. Yeah. I, I don't think my numbers are that far off. Like even if you do, you know, not with the peaks and you do something like this, that just means this inflection point right here where D5 starts winning market share, right? And Lumion loses it. I think something interesting happens this year, right? That's just kind of where this is all pointed to. And if I were to update this line based on the recent Enscape information right here, let me get rid of this line start fresh and say somewhere around here yeah it's it's all around this point and let me add the twin motion line in and i'm hoping you guys see this pattern that i'm seeing right here green is d5 red is twin motion but you can see right here this is my point and this this is probably like six months out there's going to be a switch between these guys and these guys and now lastly vantage sitting at like one or two you know, Envision's probably around the same thing. I would think by the end of the year, they're probably 
around five, maybe under five, just based on this, this volume we're seeing here. But just to kind of summarize what's going on here, back to this point, right? Something's going to happen in six months. And I think, I think these two start to simmer out a little bit and the underdogs start to increase. So that's what I have for the real time runner engines. Some other interesting data I'll drop in there. Cause I was kind of curious, you know, where, where does V-Ray stand in all this? So I'll switch to V-Ray. Purple is now V-Ray, right? This is another one. I put in the same camp as Lumion, right? Like starting out super, super strong. We're talking about like 68, 70s, 89. And like this was the industry standard for, you know, offline rendering. And now we're at about number slightly higher than Lumion, but this is going down, right? You know, think of that line I'm talking about. Something, something goes on here. And I think this is all because of the introduction of real-time rendering, getting so much quicker, so much more accessible. You don't have to use 3ds Max, right? And I think that's, that's a big, big part of this. Because in my mind, I've always been like, oh, you know, I, I've got to learn V-Ray, I've got to learn V-Ray, but I don't want to learn V-Ray, <laughs> you know? Like, in a way, it's just like, I don't want to have to deal with 3ds Max and, like, working in that environment. I love the standalone real-time rendering software. I mean, that, this is why I'm always talking about D5 and Twinmotion and Lumion, right? Because that makes more sense to me. 3ds Max doesn't make much sense. But um, I think a lot of people are realizing that, and they, they feel that. So while we're here, let me, let me try some other ones. Um, yeah, I tried getting some good, tried getting Corona to work properly, but I don't know if it's just a lack of data. I think this is a little weird. In my opinion, I feel like Corona should be like, I don't know, this area, at least like a 10 or 12. I don't know what the deal is there, but you can see I've spelled it correctly. Um, I think it's a little, little odd because I feel like, you know, maybe, maybe I'm biased, like looking at the, uh, looking at the subreddit for ArcViz, there's always Corona renders, right? So I would have expected that to be higher. Um, the other player I'll put in here, we'll put in cycles. I can see cycles being a huge deal, right? So cycles sitting at like four and three started off around three, you know, really, really kind of stagnated. I think this is going to get much higher. I think this is probably going to hit 10. And then let's also try EV. That's the real time rendering engine. Yeah. So EV is a little bit more popular, but you're seeing it's just like, it's, it's not doing much, right? It doesn't have those spikes that you see here, right? So I think it's probably going to be five to 10. I don't think it's going to be that drastic. Anyways, the point of all this is to just be able to plot the data and just see the trends of who's growing and who's falling. I know this video is a little different from my usual stuff, but I came across it today and I was like, it's just something I got to talk about because I feel like people haven't noticed this or like mentioned, especially like the Lumion stuff. Like I thought that was kind of crazy. This, this drop here, I didn't expect that. Um, and then kind of like the rise of D5 and twin motion, like that's really, really interesting to see. Uh, you know, Enscape definitely had a rise, but it's it's been, you know, kind of like hanging out from like 2022 to now, like in a in a good spot, like hasn't really gone up too much, hasn't really gotten down too much. Um, it's a really interesting trends, but you can use this for anything. You know, I'm using it for for engines because that's what we're, we're here for. But you can use this for news, any any keyword. You can even do like sports. Anyways, if you guys like this, happy to do another one on a on a different matter. As always, if you have a comment or any thoughts, you know, Drop it down below, leave a like, and subscribe if you like the content. See you next time.